Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. I hope you can hear me. Yeah, I think that's okay. So, welcome to a very specific evening here at the Sigmund Freud Museum. I'm happy to welcome you on behalf of the Sigmund Freud Museum. We are here where Sigmund Freud conceived the interpretation of dreams and dreams are in the center of this evening now. So we will be seeing a presentation of Elsewhere, an app for your phone, where you can uh, put your dreams, an app that helps you and suggests you interpretations of dreams. And afterwards we will have a discussion about that and I'll take some minutes to introduce our speakers today to you. And then we will already start with the discussion. So Elsewhere was started and developed by Kelly Barkley, who is sitting beside me and he's pointing directly at <laughs> <laughs> Jess Quinn and Dan Kennedy. So I will be happy to start with you. So Jess Quinn is a software developer and co-founder of Elsewhere. And he's, he wrote to us, he's committed to advancing the understanding of dreams through the use of technology. And we also have Dan Kennedy here on the panel, also a software developer and a linguist and also co-founder of Elsewhere and he works on the front end and develops dictionary and language learning software so a very manifold AI specialist I might say and you live in Australia basically but both of you say you're digital nomads <laughs> <laughs> so here we have Kelly Balkley who is a psychologist of religion and focusing on dream research I must say for decades right now and uh, you're the director of the Sleep and Dream database and senior editor of the journal Dreaming. And you have such an amount of publications that I just take some of them. Even in 2023, there were uh, three of them called The Scribes of Sleep, uh, 2020 Dreams and the Spirituality of Dreaming. And you live in Estacada in Oregon, which is, if I'm not wrong, close to Portland. Yes. So the three of you will do a presentation on the app, on Elsewhere, and afterwards we will have a panel discussion. And I may introduce you first to Brigitte Holzinger, who is now in the first row. She's one of the leading experts of sleep and, sleep and dream research in Austria. She works as a clinical and health psychologist and psychotherapist. And she is the founder of the Sleep, uh, sleep and Dream Center here in Vienna. And she studied at the Medical University in Vienna, if I got it rightly, and in Stanford. We also have Daru Hupert, who will bring in the, the perspective of psychoanalysis. He studied social and clinical psychology in New York, London, Zurich and Cambridge. Also taught in Zurich and is a um, psycho, psychoanalyst in Vienna, training analyst for the Vienna Psychoanalytical Association. And he writes about different topics of psychoanalysis, such as dreams, shame, and sexuality. So we will be happy to have you here and now I ask you to start with presenting the Elsewhere app. Yeah, great. Thank you, uh, Peter and, and, and the museum uh, for uh, uh, giving us this opportunity to Daniela and, and Eva, I don't know where Eva is uh, back there, and, uh, and Monica who is not here. Uh, we're very grateful for this chance to share with you uh, some of our, our findings and our work uh, here at the uh, 19 Berggasse, uh, the axis mundi of modern dream research, the coordinate zero zero of psychoanalysis, and in many ways the, the, the place where elsewhere first, first got going. And that's a picture of the four of us where, in addition to Jez and Dan, um, Sheldon Junker is the third uh, developer of elsewhere. He's not uh, with us tonight, but a uh, vital part of the team. And it's really, I, I am. I help these guys. These are the guys who are making it happen. They know the coding. They know how uh, uh, the pieces all go together. But I find this just just fascinating, um, uh, opening up fascinating potentials for the future of dream research. So I've been very excited to to join with them. And and so all I want to say before passing it over to Jez and Dan is um, acknowledging that in some ways uh, our patron spirit of this space might not like elsewhere. Uh, Sigmund Freud might have some issues with elsewhere. And so right away, I would uh, say a couple of things that we are not trying to do. This is not uh, a substitute for therapy. It's not meant to be a, a, a form of therapy to use elsewhere. It's, it's educational. It's for self-awareness, for growth. Uh, it's not meant to replace therapy. Um, in psychoanalytic terms, we're working with the manifest content of dreams. We're not 
claiming that we're getting at the latent content of dreams as Freud conceptualized that. Um, we do believe that the manifest content of dreams is actually enormously meaningful in many ways, unlike Freud in, 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 in his uh, original theory. So, uh, but just to be clear there that we're not claiming that we get at the levels of dreams that, that Freud does in a psychoanalytic interpretation. Um, uh, and then um, I, I suppose I'd, 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 I'd try to preempt a, a, a charge that we're engaged in wild psychoanalysis, what, what Freud referred to as sort of psychoanalysis run amok on the streets. And we're really, here we are, we're trying to be respectful and engage with Freud, uh, with psychoanalysis and trying to make this, this app um, an ally of, of, of the way uh, psychoanalysts today work with dreams and work with, with uh, symbolic interpretation generally. So with that, uh, sort of a clearing the space, uh, I'll pass it over to Jez and Dan to share with you what this very powerful app can do and what it might do uh, going forward. Yeah. Well, thanks, Sally. Uh, yeah. uh, and thanks uh, to the Freud Museum for allowing us to showcase the app here. Um, my name's Jez and I'm here with Dan. I would mention Sheldon as well. So we're the three developers that work on this uh, app. And there's also, along with Kelly, giving us um, an, an advisory role uh, and helping us with the knowledge and research. Uh, there's also uh, Lily and Yo, uh, Lily Corbez and Yo Yasuda, uh, who are the designer and uh, uh, illustrator for us. Um, so a little bit about uh, Elsewhere. It's a multi-platform app. It works on iOS, Android, and uh, web. Uh, the technology we use is React Native Web, uh, so we can, uh, if that interests you. Uh, it's also translated and works in uh, 11 different languages. So we try to uh, make it as uh, kind of accessible to as, a lot, as many people as possible. Um, so I'll, that's enough of the kind of app uh, behind. Uh, I would like to actually uh, go through, uh, maybe give you a demonstration uh, of what the app looks like. So um, imagine Freud uh, was alive today. I mean, we've got uh, elsewhere here, uh, and it's. Uh, yeah, but at the core of it, it's a dream journal. Uh, it's a place for your dreams. Um, we want to encourage people to keep records of their dreams, and uh, we believe that this practice, uh, we can learn more about ourselves and each other. Uh, so I'm going to try and take you through the main features of the app. Uh, and this, you kind of imagine as if Sigmund uh, had got the app and he had entered his dreams into our app. Um, so the first thing we, uh, we look at is adding a dream uh, and that's uh, we try to make this as easy as possible um, and frictionless as possible so the only thing that's actually required is um, the actual content uh, and just so happens uh, Freud has um, wants to put in a dream and it's the dream about in Irma's injection from uh, July 24th 1895 uh, so we'll put that in. Uh, uh, three, July 4th. Uh, there we go. That's 24th. Oops, sorry, July 24th. Thank you. There we go. Um, I'm just going to get this. There we go. And in my dream. And. Uh, we also have uh, a note section which is we, we can be used for like waking life associations um, and we, we'll put those in as well uh, as try to find these. Uh, you know, yeah, this is like the important. preamble from, from interpretation of dreams that he, he gives to the urban dream. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, so, uh, yeah, we try to make this as frictionless as possible and uh, you know, the only thing that we really required is the content, but we've put in everything that's required now. I'm going to save it. Um, so, on uh, once we've it, it added the uh, the dream, uh, we have uh, a number of things that come back from the system. First thing is uh, dream art, 
Um, we've got a number of styles uh, for the dream art. Um, Freud has decided he likes the uh, old illustration style, and uh, <laughs> this is what we've got back. <laughs> uh, now this is like we can change this, but like uh, you know we've got a different styles, and you can uh, refresh this image. The next thing that you've got is uh, the tags. So the tags are the backbone of the system. Um, it's taken the text from the dream and uh, converted that into uh, tags that can be uh, used. Let's see, this went better. Uh, that are then used uh, to, within the analysis. Uh, of the dream. Uh, you can see if you click on Irma, Irma is a tag, uh, you can then see that uh, we can add waking life associations uh, and you see here that Floyd's already put in that is an intimate friend of his uh, who she who he treated psychoanalytically and some of it in 95. Um, we can see the dreams that are associated with that particular tag and if we look at say for example woman you see that here, there's a number of dreams that have appeared uh, with that, with, with uh, the woman tag. Uh, and um, yeah, f one thing to kind of note as well is that the, we have the, the tags are uh, categorized. So we have you know, tags for uh, people, um, we have tags for uh, settings and uh, actions um, uh, among, amongst <laughs> others. Um, yes, and uh, if, if we have also other tags as well, uh, we can see that in this dream, um, it's a famous dream, and the colours have been picked out, uh, the white and grey, which correspond to the, the colours he saw once whilst looking uh, in Irma's mouth uh, uh, in this dream. So, uh, and then we also have special kinds of tags called symbols, uh, which are um, kind of common tags uh, that also have additional information uh, associated with them. Um, we have these these kinds of tags and symbols uh, come into our own once we um, look at them as a collection. So we can look at these as uh, in my symbols, and we can see that there's a number of uh, you know, the, the kind of imagery, the medical imagery, uh, you know, hospital, uh, and uh, born, uh, you know, things like this are present. Uh, we also have other interests that uh, Freud has in his dreams, like um, you know, the reading books there, and the natural sciences with the flower there. Um, and we can also uh, see other uh, other stats and uh, stats and figures from the dreams that come back from the tags um, and they can be found in the charts here so here we can see an overview uh, we can see that uh, you know, the kind of dreams that have been entered you know, could go from 1867 up there to uh, 99 uh, there we go, sorry, people are back. Uh, you see a graph here. Uh, and tags as well. Uh, you can see that uh, you know, the characters that take place uh, or that have been extracted out of the dreams that uh, Freud's put in. The settings, you can see Rome is, is one of them. Yeah. So Freud's added his dreams in two languages here. That's why we have Homer and Rome. <laughs> <laughs> okay. So um, one last thing, uh, what, uh, another thing, sorry, that would uh, okay, I can, would like to show you um, is that we have added this feature called groups. Um, we can see that uh, Sigmund has uh, joined a group with uh, Franz Kafka, so these are the members in there. Uh, and the, Franz has already shared a dream into this group. Um, and this is a private group. And we, we kind of hope that a lot of people would get some benefit from this. Um, so back to the original dream, uh, which is entered. Uh, 
Um, we can find this one. Uh, look at this one. And uh, one thing that I didn't kind of go through, but uh, the interpretation is what is another thing that we get back. It's like, as well as the tags, we have this interpretation. And this is uh, what we get back. And it's meant to be something quite open ended. Um, you know, it's, like, it's written in a way that allows you to make your own conclusions. Uh, you can see that. Um, you know, I can read it through, but I think... Uh, you know, read the first paragraph. Yeah, the, we've got, if, if this were my dream, it, it might suggest a struggle with feelings of responsibility, guilt and self-doubt. Irma's illness and my attempts to diagnose and treat it could symbolise my efforts to resolve a difficult issue in my waking life. The fact that Irma does not accept my solution might reflect my own feelings of inadequacy or uncertainty about whether I have dealt with the situation correctly. Uh, for those of you who know that dream, um, I that, that would... Uh, Kind of, you can see how that might be helpful, um, and there's a bit more there. But if I go into, um, like we're always adding new features, um, and we have more complex um, uh, insights that come from the content of all the dreams, and they um, might give you more information about the characters in your dreams, the symbols, um, the settings, uh, and. Uh, we also have one feature that's kind of hot off the press, uh, kind of only finished a few hours ago, which is, uh, and that's uh, this a feature that's ask your dreams. It's ask your dreams anything. Uh, so we, we, Sigmund has used this feature uh, and asked a number of questions uh, we think that might be useful. So like he asked, can you pull out a few themes that occur across multiple dreams and discuss each in a paragraph. Um, and this has got taken the whole series of his dreams and uh, synthesized them to give the answer. And this is uh, the kinds of themes that were brought back. So we have themes of dissection and medical imagery, um, historical and literary figures, um, authority and political imagery, travel and geography, family and personal relationships, Anxiety and inhibition. Um, I'll read the conclusion. Uh, maybe read one of the other ones as well. Uh, I can go through. Yeah, I'll just read this one. Just like. So, in conclusion, uh, the dreamer's subconscious mind appears to be wrestling with themes of self analysis, cultural identity, power and authority, life's journey, and familial roles and personal anxieties. The dreams serve as a rich tapestry reflecting the dreamer's inner world and the complex interplay between their personal experiences, aspirations, and fears. Um, we're hoping that you know, the, these themes uh, would be helpful for um, kind of self-exploration. Um, we want to, uh, we, you know, we're always kind of building uh, new features. One of the other features that we would like, or we've kind of asked the question about is, you know, can the system uh, with its AI actually uh, you know, do a Freudian analysis? Um, so I will uh, pass to Dan, maybe. Okay. You know, well, I'll, I'll say for start, I can't do Freudian analysis. It can maybe do an approximation of a Freudian uh, dream interpretation. Um, This, this is one more thing, like if you open up elsewhere now, if you have it installed, um, there's also a, there's a QR code there if you don't have it, but there's um, elsewhere.to is the website. If you install it now, you can, or update your app, the latest version has this sort of library in here, so you can look at Sigmund Freud's dreams and also see some of those, uh, those longer insights if you want to read them in more detail, um, as well as Kafka's. Um, so one thing before we start talking about Freudian interpretation of dreams um, is that it's, being, it's actually being done, there's a lot of apps out there purporting to do Freudian dream analysis. Um, so it's not that we're sort of totally coming up with something in the wild. Um, these sort of large language models, ChatGPT, um, now exist and people love to do things like write down, interpret this dream as if you were Sigmund Freud. Um, 
And I could go onto the internet now and find half a dozen of these um, that already exist. Um, but um, interestingly, they're not, if you sort of look into them closely, they're not particularly Freudian. Um, this is one example, um, which I won't say the name of the app, it's a very well designed app, um, which is nice, but um, they sign off every interpretation with warm regards, Sigmund Freud. And um, <laughs> I can see some people wincing in the front row. Um, yeah, uh, and the dreams, uh, but the interpretation is not, it's coming straight from ChatGPT. Or they've attempted to do some kind of Freudian interpretation, but it's not particularly Freudian. Um, so I put in a dream of my own here, slightly embarrassing. Um, but it's one that I thought had a slightly Freudian tinge to it. Um, I hope I'm not being too perverse here, but... Um, oh, make it zoom. Um, yeah, okay. So, um, yeah. I saw something Freudian in here, perhaps there's not. Um, there's, <laughs> I'll just read the first paragraph. Um, there's a roller coaster inside Centre Point Tower. That's in Sydney. Um, I know I went on it before when it was a strange and unknown, but now it's been redone by Scenic World, where I work, it's a theme park. And I get on and I'm impressed by how smooth and exciting it is as it winds around in the semi-dark inside the building. When it gets to the end, I feel a wave of nostalgia and happiness. Um, and then it ends in a kind of cave and I have to uh, get to the cave. To get to the main cave, you have to crawl along a narrow cave hollow on the side of the building, <coughs> barely protected from dropping by the old wood. Um, so I thought, you know, whether or I'm not saying exactly what Freud would have said about this, he would have asked me lots of questions about it. But um, I think you could, you know, you could make, for example, a sexual interpretation of that dream. Um, and I think someone doing a sort of pure Freudian analysis without asking me too many questions about my life, that's something I might expect. Um, but uh, the interpretation's fairly good, but, but generic. Um, it says, uh, my dear dreamer, in your dream, the roller coaster inside Cinepoint Tower represents the journey of life and the experiences that come along with it. It symbolizes the ups and downs, the thrills and excitement, the twists and turns, etc., etc. And interestingly, whenever you mention Sigmund Freud, it likes to say things represent the unconscious, which I find a little bit strange. Um, but it says, the semi darkness inside the building represents the unknown aspects of yourself and your subconscious mind. Um, So, um, so AI Freud is difficult. Um, so how, how do we get the app to do a Freudian interpretation? Um, at all, obviously it's not gonna be a substitute for analysis at all, but um, we hope that we could do something which is approximating something that someone would recognize as a Freudian analysis. I'll try to talk a little bit slowly, I realize. Uh, English is not the, everyone's native language. Um, so the first thing we tried to do is just tell the, this is sort of prompting ChatGPT. If people don't know, you can sort of ask these large language models a question and then you know, they'll respond. Um, but it's very important what kind of question you ask and how you phrase it. Um, so if we put in a dream and say to the language model, um, okay, imagine you're Freud and interpret this dream. Um, it doesn't do it. It says, hello, I'm Sigmund Freud. And then it, proceed, it sort of proceeds to say, the roller coaster represents your life and the ups and downs and exactly the same thing that it said before. Um, and this is what we actually tried to do with this dream. Um, the next thing we tried to do was say, okay, this is a summary of what Freudian analysis is. Um, and please, obviously an extremely short summary. Um, Freudian dream analysis. Um, and please apply this when you're interpreting the dream. Um, also doesn't work. Um, and we figured that the AI had actually you know, 
when it's been programmed by OpenAI or whoever it is, it's it's told specifically sort of don't don't say things that are offensive, don't sort of say too many sexual things. In a way, you could say perhaps the AI is is repressed um, by its by its overlords. Um, so the only way we found that did do something vaguely Freudian um, was to break down some elements of what we might expect to be in a Freudian dream interpretation and then ask the AI to apply it step by step. Um, so for example, um, say three types of innate wishes can be found at the core of every dream, aggressive wishes, egocentric wishes, and or sexual wishes. And dreams are generated by the frustrated energy of these wishes. We put in a few different things, describe the dream, and then say some things about condensation, displacement, and then say, okay, step by step, try to pull out some positive wish fulfillments in this dream. Um, try to pull out some negative elements of the dream that may be censored wish fulfillments. Um, try to find some things uh, that are potentially repressed sexual wishes. Um, so we step through it like that. Um, so just briefly, this dream, it did better. Uh, this is the dream in Elsewhere. Um, and so, for example, it did um, pull out, for example, some sexual symbolism. Um, the semi-darkness of the roller coaster ride, the winding path, and the secretive nature of the final cave-like structure could be analysed as symbolic of the dream of sexual wishes or desires. Um, the narrow cave hollow might represent genitalia, the act of crawling through, and so on, and so on. Um, so that is that dream. Um, I thought I'd just briefly mention a dream um, a little bit more fully. Um, this was a dream, it's a very short dream, so I thought I'd say this. Um, of mine again, I dreamt of a kind of Yuri Gagarin parody act called Yuri Gorgon. <laughs> and I gave, the, I gave the dream, I gave the AI a little bit of background. Um, I thought it's important to say I was an artist. I was an artist before I became a programmer, and that might be relevant. Um, so the first thing we asked it to do was find some wish fulfillments in the dream, and it found some. It says, the fusion of Yuri Gagarin, an astronaut pioneer with the name Gorgan, represents, reminiscent of the famous artist Paul Gorgan, could represent a desired synthesis of exploration and creativity. The dreamer, being a programmer who used to be an artist, might hold a latent wish to integrate these facets of their identity. The act of parody here could be a condensation, combining aspects of their persona into a single expression that can be experienced without the risk of literally being literally judged, fulfilled through the embodiment of a parody figure. Um, so I don't know how, many, how much people have sort of played with ChatGPT, but um, this is the latest, um, most advanced model, and I mean, I'm getting used to it now, but I find it quite impressive, the kind of things that it can pull out like that. Um, uh, and also that I found the sexual, which is kind of interesting here, um, it's for a bit of spice. Um, says the dream, as for the dream representing potentially, potentially repressed sexual wishes, understanding that Gagarin was the first man in space might symbolize a pioneering penetration into the unknown, an act that could be associated with phallic symbolism and thus a sexual conquest. Gorgon, known for his vibrant and erotic depictions of Tahitian life, might symbolize sexual freedom and the beauty of natural desire. Uh, together, Yuri Gorgon suggests an integration of dynamic achievement with sensual exploration. Etc. Etc. So, this is quite advanced. It not only knows that Gauguin is an artist; it also knows that Gauguin was a bit of a, uh, you know, an adventurous guy in uh, in his Pacific Island adventures. So, it's making these kind of real associative leaps, which I find amazing. Um, so, in terms of associations, um, I think for Freud, those free associations, um, the associations between 
of different objects, objects and emotions are really part of the uh, part of the core of what the analysis does. And um, I don't think the AI can replicate sitting down with a, an analyst and really teasing out all of your personal associations. But if you put things in, um, strangely, AI, you could think of it almost like an association machine. Um, how these large language uh, models work is they're predicting the next word which is going to come in the sequence. They say, okay, given this input, say the first word that's possible, say the second word, say the third word, say the fourth word. Um, so they're not free associating, but it is, it is associating. Um, and finding, uh, based on the associations of words that it finds on the internet, it's finding associations. Um, and there are lots of other ways to kind of automate this association features, um, automate associations. Um, other examples are WordNet, the, uh, an example of something that finds synonyms, something that we've used before called explicit semantic analysis, where we were finding the similarity between different dreams. And that was basically using Wikipedia, believe it or not, to sort of say, if two words are in the same Wikipedia article, they're likely to be related. So uh, Venus and Mars, for example, Roman gods and planets. Um, so there's lots of ways that I think computers and different forms of AI now are finding associations and finding you know, what I'd call meaning, um, which I think is fascinating. Um, and interestingly, the, the model that they're using most often, ChatGPT, whatever, it's called a neural network. Um, and you, know, you put, in the, put in kind of inputs, like the dream, um, a bunch of sort of hidden weights in the middle, and put in output, the next word, next word, next word. Um, and I think that's quite, that's interesting in terms of Freud's, some of Freud's earliest work was dealing with neurons. And this is Freud's sketch here on the left-hand side. Um, uh, Freud's own sketch of neurons and the flow of neural energy, illustrating his concept of diversion of neural energy. Um, and it represents the... Uh, he believed this was the neuronal mechanism underlying the repression of forbidden wishes. Um, so I think Freud would have been, if he was alive now, would have been extremely interested that, um, that these sort of biological systems uh, being in a way reproduced in a simple way and making associations and meaning. So we're not there entirely there yet, but it's very interesting from a Freudian perspective. And just very briefly, um, I think that a reason, I, another reason I think Freud would be very interested in this is that um, you know, in Freud, Freud's day, it was all about the meaning of dreams. Everything was, the meaning was important. And then I think there was a long sort of period where it was more about sort of brain chemistry and what could be sort of done with very simple automated analysis. And now we are, I think, getting to a stage again where we can look at meaning, but with, it in, with the help of AI and in an automated way. So, yeah, it's almost like we've invented, uh, from an artistic perspective, it's almost like we've invented the, the portable paint set, like the Impressionists, and now lots of people can go forth and use these things. And well, Gorgon's post-impressionist, but anyway, um, I think Freud would have been excited. And that's the end. Okay, so thank you, then and Jess, for um, presenting the app to us now. Um, I may ask you, I'm impolite, I know, to, to <laughs> leave the panel now, so that you will yeah. we'll shift now. <clears throat> that one question that arose to me right now, since then, that Freud would really be interested in this app. Freud is not here anymore, but psychoanalysts are. So what does a psychoanalyst say? Are you interested in this app and how Freudian can artificial intelligence ever become? Yeah, I think... You see, I, I first of all, I have to say that I'm, I'm somewhat... Uh, I'm recovering from a flu, so I hope I'm not too rhapsodical and somewhat coherent. But... I think that as a recording device, there are certain features which I think are quite interesting. And, uh, you know, um, 
Freud in 1923 in an essay on the theory and practice of psychoanalysis says that psychoanalysts sometimes forget that people dream outside of psychoanalysis. Yeah? And it's, it's a kind of wry comment, a mixture of amusement and contempt to, to remain awake to what people are doing outside of this very specific and intense exploration of dreams which is made possible by psychoanalysis. So as a recording device, I think there's mm, much to be said for this. Yeah? Many people don't find writing very natural or get stifled. Yeah, psychoanalysis, of course, is a talking cure. So you, you record your dream in a way where you talk. These, these things, I, I think, are quite interesting. Um, and by doing so, even if one doesn't add associations, one necessarily evokes them, or something that shows a family resemblance to free association. And I will later on try to make a distinction. Yeah, but let's say if I dreamt of my uncle last night, yeah, and then I remember, oh, my uncle has this illness, and ah, I met Peter yesterday, he has this illness, yeah. So th these are these are just associations which are being evoked, uh, and and the, and they're being raised to to waking consciousness, yeah. So I think that in this regard, it might be interesting to sensitize us, yeah. And to create some kind of links between what is at work at night, yeah, under the condition of the lowering of repression, yeah, and waking consciousness, or what Freud calls the surface of psychical life, yeah, and all of, all in all, I think it's benign, yeah. When we come to interpretation, I would be very skeptical, yeah, um, for many reasons. And perhaps I can... Um, to begin with, you see, when one talks about Freudian dreams, I don't think there are Freudian dreams. There's a Freudian analysis of dreams, and there might be Freudian <coughs> interpretations. Yeah? But it's not, not just thematically oriented. And fundamentally in Chapter 2, what Freud's great innovation is, is to find a method through which you can discover the meaning of truth of your dreams. Yeah? And the method is based on a shift yeah, of the authority. It's not the interpreter who comes up with the meaning. Like, so in this sense, the AI is very classical because it's, it's like the magician or like the great dream interpreter who has some intuitive knowledge and tells you what it's about. But while Freud turns this whole thing on the head and it's only through the associations of the dreamer that you have any chance of saying anything that is relevant for the dreamer. And beyond this, what is often not seen is that free association is not merely a technique. Yeah? It is, if one reads, and we won't get into details here, but if one reads the chapter 2 carefully, you will see that it is also about a state of mind. Yeah? And the corollary of the state of mind is the state of mind of the analyst, the yeah? evenly suspended attention. And these are sort of the basic ingredients which make something like an interpretation of dreams possible in psychoanalysis. Now, that's just, and so, and you see the whole theoretical apparatus that Freud develops in the interpretation of dreams, yeah, um, uh, <laughs> that's all assumed to be part of what dream interpretation is. So, pre-conscious, sensation, etc. Now, computers, of course, don't dream. And if they would, we wouldn't understand them. Yeah, so we have problem here. So the tacit assumption is that dream interpretation can only be done in any way that is meaningful, I think, by somebody who dreams and who knows both how excruciatingly delicate and powerful the active interpretation can be. Yeah? Um, I, don't, I, I could go on and on and on, but maybe, um, maybe that, that will suffice for a first answer. Yeah. yeah? Then we can, might give examples later on to make it a bit more, you know, central, palpable. So, so I, I and, well, let's, let's stop here. Yeah? Yeah. All right. Thank you. Thank you. Kelly, do you want to answer or will oh, we no, just no, no, go no, ahead with Brigitte? Yeah. I know that you already work with, with apps. So what is your experience with uh, interpreting or just dream journals with apps and what can a dream psychologist expect from an app like elsewhere? Well, uh, 
first of all, thank you for inviting me here and uh, uh, congratulations for this amazing work. Uh, mm. It looks like there is a lot of work in your hands well, yeah. and, and a lot of uh, love and passion, I guess. Mm. And then, of course, your um, dream database, which mm. is in, in itself, uh, I think, very valuable. I think I should. We should go a bit down, I think, with the volume. Do you want the, the microphone? Yeah, I think so. Um, and um, we, have, we have also created an app, we call it DreamSense Memory. Uh, but uh, of course, our means are much more modest and, uh, to start out with on the one hand. On the other hand, um, um, how should I say? Uh, use it and I recommend it as a, 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 a dream journal kind of, mm -hmm. which um, I'm, I hesitate uh, in itself because I think there is something to write a dream down with your hand in a journal. But I kind of wanted to um, meet people where they are, which is using uh, <laughs> the internet and the mm -hmm. electronic device and the smartphone and so forth. Um, and I must say, I use my app myself. <laughs> I quite like it to be able to write it down and to, exist, to have a systematic system that then you can do some uh, statistics with or something like that. Um, and uh, also our, our intention, my intention was very different, which was to um, kind of lead the dreamer to uh, kind of uh, understand uh, eventually intuitively what the dream is is about or what the dream is sort of moving inside if you mm. wish so um, uh, I, the, we didn't have the idea um, to interpret the dream at all with an app Plus, I'm a gestalt therapist, and we don't interpret dreams mm. much anyhow. Mm -hmm. It's about re-experiencing the dream, and about feeling the dream, and about feeling the movement, and the mm. senses, and the, mm. of course the uh, emotions in a dream. Um, kind of like a piece mm. of art mm. that you would enter and try to sensually uh, re-experience. Uh, um, and from there, then uh, it seems like what it ha might have to do with the waking life kind of emerges by itself. So this is how we work with dreams. And um, uh, so it, the interpretation is not something that we would be after. And I find it very ambitious <laughs> that you are after, yeah. apparently, the interpretation. Um, but if we... Uh, if I kind of refrain from the, interpret the point of the interpretation, um, I like the connection to the internet. If, on the one hand, uh, because there is so much knowledge there uh, that uh, then, and as you showed us uh, the Gauguin, all of a sudden, you learn something about Google. I think that's, that's that, that that I would like if I write my dream down to right. have right. the knowledge or the access to that knowledge. Would I call this interpretation? Maybe not, but mm. uh, it could be helpful in getting ideas or the. Um, uh, find own your own associations um, uh, yeah but of course it uh, I couldn't see that it could uh, at all uh, um, replace uh, the the dialogue with a human being because that, 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 like this in gestalt therapy this is what we live by yeah. in therapy yeah. uh, but and that it has a bit of a the taste of a of a sort of perpetuating loneliness and mm -hmm. uh, the, the loneliness is something I think many people suffer from a lot anyhow. But um, mm -hmm. 
there's so much to say about yeah. this and yeah. the usage yeah. of apps and um, mm -hmm. and um, but the, 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 I'm sure there's other. Yeah. Yeah. Thank you, so Kelly. I would like to ask you. Brigitte yeah. said yeah. you are after the interpretation. What I are you after with the app? Yeah. Well, the, this is. Uh, thank you for the comments. This is very helpful and. It is fun to share our work with you, but it is more fun to hear comments and questions and, and critical thoughts too. So uh, uh, I'll say a little bit, but I, I do hope we get some Q&A. Uh, um, so, so interpretation, I think that's a, that, that term is a, is a key one for this. And I would be comfortable however, wherever we land with this, how we wanna name things, as long as we're clear that elsewhere is not trying to do what Freud, Freudian psychoanalysis does. And if we call Freudian psychoanalysis, if that's interpretation, and then, okay, elsewhere, maybe we'll call it something else. Maybe we call what elsewhere does and other, what other people do interpretation. And then say psychoanalytic interpretation is a very special kind of interpretation. I think that's semantic a little bit. As long as we're, we're trying to be very clear, we are not trying to be therapists or psychoanalyst. So that I think is, uh, we can have the conversation about what is interpretation, what is reflection or exploration maybe. Um, I think the really interesting thing you brought up though, Daru, is uh, in particular is, uh, in my words, the, what transference relationship do we form with the AI? And so you suggested people treat it as an oracle, as an authority, as a kind of external I don't know, I'd say a magic eight ball, like you shake the magic eight ball and it will give you the answer. During conversations we had yesterday. Yeah, 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 we're following up a little bit. So, and, and I think as, as we look at this is almost the opposite, that it's not a person. It's actually more like you. You're putting in the dreams, you're putting in the associations, and then what comes back isn't coming from absolutely nowhere, it's a reflection of, of, of your own interaction with that tool, with that device. And some of these, I'm stepping back, there's been a lot of research in the past couple of decades about the patterns that can be discerned in large collections of dreams. And this is not psychoanalytic research because it's all about the manifest content, but we're building on this idea that if you gather a thousand dreams, let's say, from a person if you look at the patterns of the manifest content, all sorts of meanings and interesting patterns and insights can come just from looking at that collection carefully. A human could do that. It would take a lot of time, but you could do it. The AI just makes it fast and, and friction-free almost so that your own ability to explore your own dreams, I think Freud's insight that it's not an external authority telling you what your dreams mean, but somehow you're coming to your own insights. That's the hope that it's, that this is a, uh, an ally in that process and not a, not a, um, a thou shelter. This is what it, it means, uh, kind of authority. So yeah, that's first, first, uh, first thought and response. And, and yes, Brigitte, I, I, I appreciate, uh, the, on the kind of dystopian side. We're being very utopian with this, right? This is, this is good, this is gonna be helpful, it's gonna do wonderful things for your life. But we're aware that anything that can be used for good can be used for, for ill purposes as well. Um, and so the loneliness concern of another reason for people to go into their devices and forget there's a world out there, I think the, the community function of elsewhere is gonna be increasingly important as we develop the app. Um, you know, Sigmund doesn't just have to look at his dreams by himself. He's got Franz he can check in with. Hey, what do you, what do you think of my dreams here? Oh, I, I saw you had a dream kind of like mine. Um, that community uh, group sharing feature, I think, will enable more interaction so people don't get lost and lonely. We don't want that. So. Do, you, do you have any, Dana Jess? I don't know. Can we get the yeah. microphone for Dana Jess? Do you guys have any thoughts? Yeah. Hello. I guess I was just going to say on the topic of interpretation, um, again, whether or whatever we call it, um, it's unfortunately, I'd like to be able to say, like, you could, you could put this in or you could leave it out. 
but the fact is that people really, really, whatever this thing is called, people really, really want it. Um, <laughs> people really, really want the app to say something back to them about their, about their dream. Um, we never originally had this feature in, but um, people were like, where, where is it? I, I want this thing. So I don't think, it's more of a question of how, how do we do this the best way and how do we frame it the best way um, rather than let's leave it out. Because I think if you leave it out, someone else is going to do it who's maybe thinking less about it than us, hopefully. <laughs> uh, yes. Well, I think, you see, I, I would like to pick up this issue of the transference because, of course, you see, this is a fundamental aspect of dream interpretation is that this is being told to an analyst in, in psychoanalysis and in a particular f juncture of the relationship to the analyst and fantasies of what you're doing. And, I, I mean, one of the... Ex experiences I have with certain patients who are very, you know, let's say, technologically avid, yeah, is that these patients, for these patients, it's very clear that the computer is a kind of deus ex machina, mm. and the transference onto it is really one that, you know, in antiquity you would have to the Oracle of Delphi, yeah, uh, which is, of course, you know, the Temple of Apollo, and it's very difficult, and this kind of oracular relationship yeah, is, is very important because, you see, for these patients, it's pretty clear. You see, the motto wouldn't be, know thyself, like in the you know, Oracle of Delphi. It's rather, Google knows you. <laughs> yeah? And Google knows you better than your analyst does. Yeah? So they might, you know. Then, and that's all quite interesting when you work with patients, but it is also very problematic. And I don't think we can escape this feature. Yeah, even if you have warning signs, I think there's a kind of transferential relationship to technology and a magical relationship. Mm -hmm. I mean, there's a lot of science fiction about AI. Mm -hmm. Yeah, um, so so that's inescapable, I think, and and it needs to be thought about. Yeah? Um, some other aspects, I, I really think. I mean, some of the interpretations were kind of the, of, of an allegorical type. Mm -hmm. Yeah, like like mm -hmm. biblical dreams. We were speaking about this yesterday. Yeah, yeah? yeah. and. Um, very few dreams of patients are actually like this. Those are the dreams you find in literature. Right. Yeah? I mean, yesterday we spoke of Joseph's dream, a very famous dream in the Bible, where you know, he, he tells his brothers, I have this sheaf of wheat, and it's pointing to the sky. Yeah? While you, your sheaves of wheat, they're bowing. And the brothers react in rage. You, you, you're greater than us? Yeah? Now, this is an allegorical dream. It's very easy to find kind of meanings or t types of meaning, I think, which is often what you're doing, which is, you know, it's really relatively easy to find, and the brothers react to this, a kind of narcissistic competition, right? Yeah? Then it's relatively easy to find the issue of orality and feeding and, yeah, corn. And let us not forget, you know, Joseph later on becomes this, you know, he's, he has the storehouse of all the corn in Egypt. That's what makes him great, right? Uh, then there's an evidently, and you don't need to be a psychoanalyst to get this one, a phallic element. I mean, his is pointing up. There is a limb, right? And then there's a religious element. You're pointing to the sky. Yeah? So these, these are, uh, this is, I think, something an app could pick up on. But then your question is, A, what you choose? B, yeah? What is the specific meaning for Joseph? And we don't know, because all we'd have here are headlines. Yeah, so just topics. Mm -hmm. and, and the other aspect, I mean, as I said yesterday, if, if you know, we're, we're all being grand here. Um, if, if he were my patient, the first thing I would tell him is what, you know, I'd point out that he told his brothers. So there's something masochistic in this whole thing, in his very act of telling him, because they, that's what's going to end them, you know, throwing him into a pit and wanting to kill him. So, what's, so there is this extraordinary ambition, but it's being told to someone who will react in a way that will punish you. That might be the most interesting part of the dream, mm -hmm. because there's a transferential relationship here enacted onto the brothers. Yeah? Mm -hmm. okay? Okay. So I, I think these are the vicissitudes of interpretations, and they're very important in psychoanalysis. Mm -hmm. And there is a relationship, as I said, onto, you see a transference onto the dream itself. The dream is an object. Yeah. And um, for example, one thing in the Bible which is very clear is that everybody thinks that these are prophetic dreams. 
I mean, everybody agrees. <laughs> That's a common assumption. Mm -hmm. Now, if I have the patient, I might, it might take me a while. But I mean, that something I would need to talk about because, you know, mm -hmm. this is all about prophecy and very little about one's, just about one's desires mm -hmm. or fantasies, whatever it would be. Yeah? Mm -hmm. So these are things one would need to pick up on. And, and you pointed out yesterday, and I thought it was a very important point, the more disturbed a, pe a person would be, the stranger the use of dreams are. Mm -hmm. You can use dreams to escape things. You know, some patients come to analysis and they just produce dreams upon dreams upon dreams and the associations mm -hmm. to the dreams are further dreams and you're lost in this dream landscape. And, you, you know, you really have to take care. There's no, mm -hmm. no relationship to waking life. So, with certain people, you, you would be worried about them using and abusing the app. Right. Yeah? I mean, but I do think, because, uh, not, not that I'm, you, you know, just sound like a dour old man. Um, I, I think there's something playful about the app. Yeah, if you, if you just play around with things. That, 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 that I think is fun. And there's nothing wrong with that. Yeah? Mm -hmm. And if somebody's somewhat less disturbed, who knows, you know, they might do something with interpretation. I don't think it's going to do much. Because it actually bypasses the resistance. You see, if the dream tells me it's a sexual, whatever it was, you know, in, in walking through the cave and, yeah. And, um, well, I might just then just repeat this, but I don't know it and I don't feel it. Yeah, and there, there, there might be patients, I said, where I wouldn't, I wouldn't point out the phallic element of the dream in, in, of Joseph. Because they would just tell me, the, ah, that's what you analysts say anyway. And there's no experiential part. Yeah? So the danger is that we have a mimicry mm -hmm. of insight. Mm -hmm. yeah? And, and that, that's a subtle form of alienation which, mm -hmm. which takes place. Yeah? Mm -hmm. That's a good point. Yeah. That's a good point. Yeah, um, what I would like to, to know, since it's all around, um, AI will be so big, there are no limitations to AI and all those discussions everywhere. What do you really think uh, will be the future for psychotherapy, for psychoanalysis, given the fact that there are those apps and they are used and will be used? Yeah, but you don't use Oh, I'm supposed to, to answer this. I have to be the oracle now. <laughs> Talking about profit, right? Um, but I want to share something um, that I keep, keep, keep that keeps come come to mind, which is a bit in this vein. Um, I mentioned this yesterday. I had, that I had the pleasure to be at the ZKM and uh, um, work with a group. Uh, of people um, who wanted to distinguish the dream of uh, GP, GPT uh, and uh, 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 humans. Uh, and um, uh, it seemed to me that it became uh, pretty easy to distinguish what ChatGPT uh, made up or the kind of reported as a dream and what the human dream was like because the ChatGPT seemed to be a stereotype of some sort. Um, and um, I hope I'm not uh, insulting anybody now, but um, it, it, after a while it seemed to me that uh, um, um, a guy from Silicon Valley would uh, make up all sorts of um, stories with the, the words mystically and uh, huge and uh, wide and um, uh, exciting and uh, so forth. And that, of course, would be ChatGPT. And then if other uh, elements were in the dream, that, uh, that it, 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 it seemed to be um, easy to identify a human dream fast from, uh, from a, uh, an internet dream or a computer dream. So, well, to make the long story short, uh, I think uh, maybe um, the internet and AI has its limits too and, uh, and maybe the limits uh, can be found when it comes to dreams. Mm -hmm. uh, that doesn't mean that it mm -hmm. shouldn't be applied right. but mm -hmm. it is the question mm -hmm. what can we expect from it and how far can we go? What, right. what could it do? And in that vein to me um, as I said earlier, I'd like to have the associations of the internet, maybe not 
I wouldn't like to have an interpretation <laughs> by, the, by, by AI, but I would like the ideas and the, the, the knowledge mm -hmm. and to, to read that or to hear that. I, I think this is really interesting and it's multifaceted, I think, the answer. One, one way to look at it is that it might seem that, you know, I'm sort of a, representing a position from the late 19th century, yeah, early 20th century, and this is the future, yeah, and I actually think it's wrong, yeah, I actually think I'm representing the future for the simple reason, <laughs> for, no, for the simple reason that you see, uh, necessarily so, I think as long as human beings are going to be around, we'll probably have some form of psychoanalysis which is recognizably similar to what Freud was doing. Yeah? Um, while that's the heroism of you guys who are involved in technology, you're working fast at making yourself completely obsolete. Yeah? <laughs> Necessarily so. Yeah? I mean, if you look at the early computers, I mean, they seem more arcane and outdated than the, you know, a desk of the 17th century. Yeah? So, so uh, I, I think, but, but having said this, I mean, I do think that there will be situations and it will be coming up within psychoanalysis. Yeah? You know, probably a patient in a couple of years is going to go home and say, well, you've interpreted my dream really badly because I was on this app. Yeah? <laughs> and, you know, elsewhere, you know, and you missed those points. Yeah? And so that, that might happen. I mean, that, that would be the easiest form. Yeah? Um, but I do think that, you know, sooner or later probably the, the artificial intelligence will come up with dreams which human beings will find very difficult to distinguish from dreams of others. That, that I assume, yeah? Um, and that will create all kinds of difficulties which we... You see, the, the, the problem with technology is that given our track record, I mean, and that's a grand statement, but nevertheless, we're, we're good at changing things. We're not necessarily very good at dealing with the problems we create, <laughs> yeah? And, and this can be disastrous. So I think... I think I think we need to talk about this, yeah? um, and I do think that there might be a bypassing of subjectivity. Yeah, it's a, it's a kind of third. You see, although you say you know what you get back from the dream is you, I, I think it's a very much a third-person perspective. Yeah, it is a grand authority telling you something. Yeah, um, and. The, the, and, and you said frictionless. No, the whole point of psychoanalysis is that it's about friction. Yeah? And you, you sometimes might work out one little element, and that's all. But you overcome a resistance, and it's actually the overcoming of resistance which leads to change. Yeah? Not knowledge in an abstract sense. Yeah? That's why I'm, I'm somewhat, although I understand that it will be interesting that all of a sudden, you know, what are my ideas of Gauguin? You know, all of a sudden I might have you know, his biography and so on. But in a way, that's also problematic. Because are these really my associations? Is this really my knowledge? Is this really being effective? Because if a patient would be constantly talking about artists, let's assume, I don't know Gauguin very well, yeah, um, there would be some very interesting transferential implication that he's always talking about people I don't know anything about. Yeah? And that might be, might be me very meaningful. And then if I, you know, if I spend all my time on Wikipedia, I might be missing the main point. Yeah? yeah, of course. I mean, I, I didn't... Uh uh, mean to uh, have this uh, interpretation for clients or for yeah, yeah, yeah. but more or less for fun or the yeah, yeah. inspiration or but it could I don't see that it could replace uh, psychoanalysis or psychotherapy mm -hmm. at all or a dream group which we also have and because they uh, it lives from the ideas that other people get and um, share with the dreamer, sort of feeding back what the dream instigated in other people. And then you know that, of course, that uh, the dreamer then having heard all this often is just very touched because people, other people listen to mm. what, they, mm. what they would share. Mm. And particularly dreams often seem very, something very personal and uh, just uh, being heard, apparently, uh, does something to the dreamer yeah, yeah, yeah. by a human being, I guess. Yeah, yeah. I'd like to say one, one, one thing on kind of this. I mean, again, as I said at the very beginning, not trying to replace therapy, not trying to be therapy, um, trying to be an ally or a potential resource. Um, and and the meanings that, 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 that emerge are... 
I mean, it's phrased, I think, in a, a, as gentle and open-ended a way as possible. And so if people, I mean, we can't stop people from applying their, uh, their views to, to, to an AI, to a, a, an artificial system, but um, I think as we develop this, and, and, and the friction-free part, I mean, it's not, it's friction-free in terms of bringing one's dreams into a, a space where they can be reflected on. The friction, often as someone wakes up, it's like, oh, can I even remember? Can I keep it in mind? Do I write it down, whatever? And can I keep it in, in hand until I get to my analyst or to my dream group? Um, so the idea is that if there is information, if there's some insights to be gained, that more easily we can access that, the better. Now, you bring up resistance and, 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 and the challenges, and that's always going to be there. And this, an app will not uh, mm. overcome that. I, I, I would say, though, that um, there are more kinds of dreams than the dreams that show up in psychoanalytic therapy. Dreams are very context sensitive, very, very condition sensitive. This is why dream incubation works. Rituals and uh, cultures all around the world say prayers, sleep in special places, wear special clothes, because dreams often will respond to conscious attention, to conscious uh, awareness. People will, uh, some of you may tonight have more dreams than you ordinarily would just because you're at a gathering where we're talking about dreams. Um, what researchers have found is that that if you're in a certain life context or you're sharing dreams in a certain setting, that's going to influence not just what you share, but the kinds of dreams you're going to have. And, and the example of this, best example I know of is research where people will sleep in a sleep laboratory and they'll be hooked up to EEG machines through a couple nights and then they'll be awakened and report their dreams. In, in the many decades of sleep laboratory research, there are, you could probably count on fingers of one hand, the number of um, uh, nocturnal emission dreams, wet dreams, um, because people, they know somebody's watching them. Even mm. when they're asleep, they're aware. Mm. And I know, and maybe you've, you've heard this, Ernest Hartman told me this, a, a good old friend of ours, he was a nightmare researcher. And so he would, he would recruit people who had chronic nightmares, they'd come sleep in his laboratory, and darn it, they wouldn't have nightmares. They would just have regular dreams. And why? Because they knew that someone was watching them, was gonna, caring for them during the night, so they weren't mm -hmm. as anxious. So the point is, our dreams, even though we're asleep, and like Heraclitus says, we go into our own, our own world, we're still connected to, to, to the world around us. And that includes, I believe, different cultural dynamics, different... Uh, collective issues and themes that also appear in dreams that are not necessarily or only personal or um, uh, let's say psychoanalytically uh, juicy. And, and here I refer to the history of, of anthropology in the 20th century, early 20th century, where many anthropologists went out in the field armed with Freud's ideas, looking for dreams, asking their informants about dreams. And some of the early researchers, and this is a, an instructive mistake, they, they heard different kinds of dreams. And they said, well, these are the ones that are like what Freud talked about. So those are dreams. These other things, though, that are allegories, or they seem to be prophecies or myths or something like that, well, those aren't really dreams, because that doesn't fit with what Freud said dreams are. Those are culture pattern dreams. Those are post hoc fabrications. That was, the, that was the theoretical sort of push to define dreams as just what appears in psychoanalysis. And so I, I think that's a mistake. I think there's, a, there's a, a wide range of types of dreams. And I think psychoanalysis is excellent at certain kinds of dreams and maybe all dreams. You know, I'm not saying there's Freudian dreams or non-Freudian dreams, but there are, not, there are some dreams that are legitimately allegorical mythical, cultural, symbolic in ways. I mean, this is chapter five in some ways of interpretation of dreams. Um, and I think elsewhere may be more helpful, perhaps even than psychoanalysis, with some of those kinds of dreams. That's an empirical question. We, I, we can't settle that theoretically, but I would respond to the idea that, that, that it's not doing what can be done in psychoanalysis with the idea that psychoanalysts can't work perhaps with some other kinds of dreams just because it's a different kind of setting. So that's a, that's, that's a point. Mm -hmm. You wanted to say something? Yeah, yeah well, yeah, I mean, yeah. I, I would have no problems with the, the fact that dreams are, con you know, context sensitive. No, 
that's basic premise, of mm. course. And I, I think many of these findings of the sleep laboratory with no emissions or people not having nightmares, that wouldn't be surprising. Yeah. Mm. Now, these cultural or mythical dreams or yeah. Um, uh, the point the point would be to try to understand the person's relationship to their dreams, yeah? Mm. And for Freud, it's very clear also in psychoanalysis. I mean, dreams might also be used to evade something personal, and then you have, mm -hmm. you know, more allegorical kind of dreams, or, yeah? And some, some, I mean, the whole point of Freud's, the whole controversy around the dream symbolism in the narrow sense of the word, yeah, um, is about typical uh, elements recurring, mm -hmm. yeah? But... It, it, there's also this technical point, actually, and it's a very important one. One only regards something as symbolical mm -hmm. or not personal when, when the person is not able to associate. Mm -hmm. Yeah? Mm -hmm. and, and very often you will find that the interpretation, uh, the, the, the symbolism also has a very specific meaning for this person. Mm -hmm. Yeah? Mm -hmm. So, um, I, I would just wonder whether the, the early anthropologists had such a good notion of what Freud wrote. Yeah? They did not. Yeah? <laughs> they did not. <laughs> but. So, and, but I mean, of course, I think what is interesting, and, and two things that came to mind, I mean, people dream outside of psychoanalysis, and psychoanalysis is a very specific context, and we tend to treat dreams, as Freud says in the interpretation of dreams, like holy texts, and there's no area in our cultural life that pays as much detailed <laughs> attention. So, but of course, it is interesting to have some mm -hmm. idea of, of dreams outside of analysis, yeah, and of the different uses. For example, one thing which I found quite striking, and I don't really understand what it's about, but this kind of communal dreaming uh, spaces, yeah, because mm -hmm. that's different. You know, if, if if we open a little group and then we just sort of, you know, fling around our dreams, I, I'm not quite sure what this looks like, yeah. Mm -hmm. Um, but that seems to be a possibility in mm -hmm. the app, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah? which is very different than getting an interpretation from a machine, because yes. you get a response from someone, and that might be disturbing or not. Or if, yeah, but mm. I could listen to the three of you mm -hmm. for hours again, but I'm pretty sure mm. we have some questions in the audience, and I see already one hand raised. Please wait until the microphone reached you, because we're recording everything. So I watched a podcast called um, The Jungian Life, and Kelly, you said on it that you collected, I think, some 40,000 dreams and dream diaries. So I was just curious whether you use that data um, to feed and train AI, mm -hmm. or um, whether you are planning to do so with, with, a, specific, with a specific goal in mind. Mm. Uh. Well, I wish you hadn't outed me as having Jungian interests, but there you go. Uh, it's out now. <laughs> uh, uh, yes, the, the elsewhere is um, in some ways when we haven't, they're not totally integrated, but it's, it's the, the, the public facing um, a part of a, a database that, that the guys are also helping me develop called the Sleep and Dream Database. The yes has, I guess we tallied it up today, 40,000 some odd total dream reports from many different sources. Um, and yes, and, and that's even like we're now we're talking like we'd really like to pump that number up because to do uh, contemporary data science type type work, uh, that's that's actually a, a very small data set. But dreams are rich data. So there's 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 quite a bit to work with there. Um, and yeah, I think that the, the goal will be to work with that corpus of, 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 of dream reports from a wide range of people and different um, cultures and periods of history. And uh, if, if possible to identify something like what we could call a baselines of, of, of dreaming that, 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 you know, what are, what are kind of the average patterns, the general patterns, you know, if, if the app, uh, if we find, you know, my, in my dreams, cats appear in 20% of the dreams, one out of every five dreams, is that a lot? Is that a little? Do, do most, do, does everybody dream of cats every fifth dream? Or am I very strange in that? And most people never dream of cats. If we have that kind of information, and, and Freud references a couple of the early uh, statistical studies, or uh, one statistical study at least, um, in the interpretation. So he's sensitive to that. But um, yeah, I think you've named, you have named the goal. Does that, does that answer your question? Or does that, or maybe some of the guys could add, add to that? 
Yes, that answered it. Thank you. Okay, good. Thank you. Hello. Uh, I don't really have a question. It's, it's more of a comment, I think, because you were talking about this app not wanting to replace therapy, but I see a big risk because there are mm, many of this, yeah, supplies or technologies mm -hmm. that are used from insurances to give mm -hmm. to patients and to say, okay, look, maybe we don't want to finance your therapy, but here we have this tool so you can help yourself. And especially for psychoanalysis, which is like never financed by any insurance, right, right. I think it's really difficult to have another tool which is, right. yeah, kind of replacing yeah. real therapy. So Interesting. I, because, yeah, you said it's not replacing, but if it's getting better and better, which I think it will, because it's AI, to, yeah. then it will have a quality where people could say, yeah, this can mm. be a replacement. They will never admit it, but... Right. Yeah. So. Okay. Point point taken. Yeah. Hmm. Hmm. Thank you, hmm. Do you have a point? No. Um, I have a question. In the meantime, before the two of you made yourself obsolete, I would like to <laughs> perhaps uh, didn't hear it at the beginning, but um, Jason, then why why do you take on dreams that much, and what are your expect expectations and your goals with this app? Mm. Okay, I, I guess I'll just start very briefly. Um, I think I've, I've been keeping a dream diary since I was about 11 years old. Um, I think there's even a couple of dreams from when I was two when my mum wrote down the dream for me and um, on a sketch. And it's just a personal fascination, I think, looking, always looking back on my dreams. I've got a pile this big of all my dream journals and, um, and I can't read through them because um, you know, <coughs> I can't carry them around the world with me when I'm doing all of these things and things like that. So I... I I really wanted to make something that would be a, a fitting, beautiful home for where I could put my dreams and take them around with me and yeah, learn, not only learn about myself, but sort of learn about myself in an abstract, um, just look at the dreams and sort of go, oh, that's, that's me in a way, that mm -hmm. this, this reflects me. Not that I get necessarily a particular fact about me, but um, that's me, what about you, Jason? Yeah, I've always been fascinated uh, by uh, by dreams and just dreams and uh, the kind of kind of uh, the uh, link to kind of art and like um, inspiration. Um, as as I kind of keep a, a record, it's good to kind of understand a bit more about myself as well. So it's uh, the sharing aspect has always been a part of my uh, like life as well. So. It's trying to get this, um, these, the ways that dreams are kind of interacted with um, during waking life and trying to get that, um, kind of encapsulate that in an app or in, in an app experience. So the kind of sharing of dreams with, um, with other people, you know, if we can get this in the app in the form of groups, I think that's, you know, we're kind of moving it uh, towards something that's interesting. Um, and still keeping that uh, human part of it alive. Um, and yeah, just getting this combination of, um, I'm just fascinated by the, this uh, kind of AI um, kind of revolution and the possibilities it brings, the fact that it's kind of very similar to um, how like, the kind of brain works, you know, with its, with its associations and, um, it's kind of rather like you know you can get it to dream, uh, and yeah, just the, that kind of things. That kind of thing is interesting to me. I'd like to see where it goes. So, kind of yeah, that's that's where I am. Yeah. Any more comments in the audience? Yeah. yeah. So um, you mentioned that, well, obviously it's focused the interpretation part with Freudian mm -hmm. analysis. Um, but you mentioned other types of dream interpretation, and I'm just curious, are you planning to include those? Like maybe, because you mentioned cultures, Jungian archetypes, collective consciousness, that would seem to fit with some of the other types of dreams, the allegorical things and myths. Yeah, yeah, this is, I mean, the guys might put that in by the end of tonight, who knows? Like new features are happening all the time. Uh, this, this 
is where we're starting. You know, there's, there's sort of the, the, the standard, you know, kind of when we use just chat GPT as it is, uh, an interpretive flow that comes back, and then we're trying to teach it psychoanalytic approaches. Um, and that's, as Dan and Jez have said, that's proving to be difficult, um, and appropriately so. It's not, we don't expect this to be easy necessarily, but um, yeah, the next step would be if we can do this in a way that feels respectful and appropriate and, and people like it and, and it and it doesn't seem to do horrible harm and maybe, maybe that's a false hope, but um, yeah, I think there is a hope of developing other interpretive kind of uh, modes and maybe, you know, ultimately it, 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 again, the idea that it's, it's reflecting the dreamer, him or her themselves. Um, maybe you have enough dreams of your own that go in there. It, you can train it to like interpret it for me, you know, don't interpret like Freud or Jung or anybody else help, you know, as, as you, as, as the user interacts, there may be a, a kind of a mutual calibration in that sense. So, yeah, Dan, you can. Yeah. Oh, I was just gonna say briefly, um, I hope that sort of putting in different interpretive styles doesn't seem like sort of flippant or anything. I, I see it more like the different interpretive styles maybe take away a little bit of that oracle element that you're afraid of, that we're not saying the dream has this meaning or that meaning. We're saying almost like the computer is saying, if this were my dream, it might mean this, uh, you know, but see what you can do with it. Um, yeah. If I may add to that a little bit, that's why we had in our app uh, no interpretation and the ambition to um, <coughs> give the dreamer some support to um, develop their own uh, uh, no, uh, understanding of themselves, really. Mm. And I think it would be a pity if that would be lost, because that's mm -hmm. the main point, isn't it? Mm -hmm. To make, uh, yeah. the, to empower the dreamer and uh, mm -hmm. tell them, well, you know best what uh, mm -hmm. this may deal with, what you just created. Mm -hmm. And uh, so uh, I, I even take this f so far to say this is a political quest. Mm -hmm. You know, if people are more self-responsible, they may not be so tempted to um, look up to uh, some leader type. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah, well, I mean, I, I thought this idea is rather, fun, if you know, amusing in many ways, that, you know, you can choose your interpretation, have a Freudian, have a Jungian, have an Adlerian, or whatever else. But but um, I, I, I completely agree with the fact that it, you know, the real revolution of Freud is that the person has, through his associations or her associations, appropriates the dream in a particular way. We do also think that the analyst has a role because of the um, resistances, so it's quite complex there. Um, however, what, what really I would like to raise is, you see, I, I think this, it's very well-intentioned, and I, I really think that you, you know, you're trying to think about these things. However, I mean, what comes to mind for me is, you know, the path, the road to hell is paved with good yeah. intentions, yeah? <laughs> yeah, and that you're, you know, that the thing you're developing is powerful in and of itself, mm -hmm. in a way that I don't think we we have full control over, yeah. Mm -hmm. And I remember it was many years ago. I I was speaking to someone involved in this project where they were trying to create um, an AI version of Freudian metapsychology, mm -hmm. so sort of the basic basic frame of mind, yeah, and. Uh, this person was a programmer, and they said, you know, as a programmer, we believe that if we can program this, it's true. Now, this opens all kinds of <laughs> epistemological and logical c c cans of worms, but I, what I find interesting yeah. is the fantasy this is. You know, I mean, we all tend to overestimate mm -hmm. our importance, and everybody thinks that, you know, without our job, the world stops, stops turning. But this goes beyond that. And to, to, mm -hmm. to give you a se sort of mm -hmm. felt sense, the, the fantasy this seems to embody is that at the beginning there was chaos, but you know God was sitting there with his iMac, yeah, and he <laughs> typed in "Let there be light," yeah. So it's a kind of computational view of things, yeah. yeah? yeah, yeah and yeah. and the question is really what is being left out, yeah. And you know, with very yeah. powerful fantasies, and I I actually think we 
should be aware that the technology is probably more powerful than our, our understanding of it. Right. Yeah? yeah. Kelly, any final remarks? Um, Well, thank you. I mean, this is, I, I think, Dan and Jez and Sheldon, when we get back, we have, we, have, we have a lot of work to do and a lot to think about. And, and Daru, I, I, I very much appreciate the, the, the cautions around the intentions, because this is, um, well, as Dan said, if, if, we, if we're not doing this, other people are doing it. It's mm. happening. So, um, and, and myself, I'll just speak for myself, but I, I find it easier to criticize something effectively if I know how it works from the inside. It's easy to throw, you know, bricks from the outside, but to me, I'd like to be able to see what these tools can do, see what is being done with them. And now this is trusting my own, my own goodness and I rely on the guys to help as well and other, other members of, of the Dream Research community who are part of all this to think of are, are there more responsible ways um, of bring these tools in the world. And I guess myself, I, I trust my dreams. I trust my dreams. If they don't like something, they'll just dry up. You know, if they don't like what AI is doing, I, my recall will diminish. Um, that's, that's a pretty directly proportional uh, relationship. So, um, but yeah, I, I, I mean, I, I, I hope nobody gets in trouble with it, but if anybody tries working with this and has thoughts or comments, this is truly uh, a work in progress, and uh, uh, it felt appropriate given that we, we, we had our early conversations here at the, at the Freud Museum, uh, that we come back and share what we've, what we've been doing and what we think is good about it and what asking your uh, feedback about what we need to think about and uh, work on. So I appreciate it. Yeah. yeah. All right. So Thank you for presenting. Yeah. Thank you for being at the panel. Thank you all for having been here. You may want to try this app and play around with it. I do for several times. And have a good evening and sweet dreams. Yeah, thank you, Peter. Thank you. Thank you.